These two panes of glass, one over here, one over there, they look quite similar, don't they? But watch what happens. After I very slowly get these gloves on. <laughs> Ooh, this is ordinary glass, it's very, very brittle. Compare that now to this glass over here. This is toughened glass. It's barely left a mark on it. If I really gave it some welly, I could smash it. But there's definitely a difference between these two panes of glass. The secret is chemistry. But first, I just need to uh, undo this. Ooh. I'm going to go into a little bit about the molecular structure of glass. But just bear with me, because I, I promise this is going to be worth it. Glass is actually a supercooled liquid, so you can think of it more like some strings of beads of atoms rather than like a really nice regular structure. And glass is made from sand, limestone and sodium. Charged particles, or ions, of the sodium will sit inside this structure just on the surface like that. Right. That's normal glass. Now, when it comes to toughened glass, you have the same sort of strings that kind of go like this. But instead, they deliberately remove the sodium ions on the surface and replace them instead with potassium. I don't know if you remember any of your chemistry from school, but potassium is a much bigger ion than sodium. And so, its presence in this structure means that those strings of beads fill up the spaces between these strings are like squished out towards the edges. And it means that if ever something comes along and cracks down here, the potassium helps to just keep everything neatly knitted together. With more delicate electronics than you can shake a USB stick at, fitness trackers have to withstand all of the knocks and the bumps that we invariably put them through. So I heard this great story about a pig that was wearing a fitness tracker, monitoring its step count and proving that it was free range. Except unfortunately, one day, the fitness tracker fell off. Pig eats it, it got damaged in the digestive tract, ended up causing a fire when it came out the other end. Now that is quite an extreme thing for a fitness tracker to have to go through. But when you're building this stuff, you certainly don't want to create one that's just going to fall apart at the slightest knock or scrape. And that is why those clever fitness tracker designers have added a component that makes them robust enough to withstand almost anything that we throw at them. The toughened glass screen. But just how strong is the glass? Well, this is the place that the tech companies come to to find out. If you really want to test something, give it to a four-year-old. That is Terry Leo from Quanta Laboratories. His job is to try and break stuff, testing out products for most of the major companies <laughs> in Silicon Valley. Do you ever just want to, like, smash stuff? That's what we do. I mean, I know. Terry puts products through their paces to make sure that they can withstand whatever we do to them. Although, OK, maybe not the pig thing. This is what we call the guided drop. And basically, it drops a unit at any direction and point. It basically holds on to it. And at the last foot, it lets it go and drops it and hits the perfect flat drop. To test just how much stress the glass can withstand, Terry has a machine that will drop the device from various heights. We're starting at eight feet. Oh my gosh! You want to go higher? Nothing. Fifteen wow. feet. Wow! The glass is proving tricky to damage by dropping. But how about resisting scratches from keys in our pockets, for example? Well, Terry has a whole other machine for testing just that. This test right now can add different weights on there, how much weight to put on it, how much force and pressure to put on it. So there's a certain amount of weight that, that presumably the manufacturers say that's OK? Yeah, yeah so, so you can weird. see no real scratch marks, no, just going back and forth. Can you put it in your pocket? Of course. Would I recommend that? Probably not. I wouldn't put my 
you know, watch in my pocket if I know I had keys there. I had uh, one of these smartwatches, and uh, my daughter was having a tantrum in a in a supermarket. Sure. And like a fool to try and uh, you know get her out of her tantrum, I said that she could w wear my smartwatch. At which point she proceeded to have this huge tantrum on the floor, and then uh, by the end, I mean it was so scratched you could barely see it. They just know how. We actually tested a bunch of these toys, and it was just crazy the types of tests we have to do on them. All the bodily fluids you have to try on it, it's just nasty. Fake sweat, fake pee, we have you know, different acids that you could put on there. And this is what I think about all day. How do I torture a device? Well, my old smartwatch died back in the cereal aisle of the supermarket, RIP. But this one has survived a 15-foot fall and Terry's scratch test. It's the Bruce Willis of smartwatches. So far, we've dropped the device onto wood, but now it's time for the toughest test so far. We could do a concrete drop. You want concrete? Yes. Oh, that did not sound good. There's one little crack. There's one little crack. I'm sure like the next one would do it. A tiny hairline. Astonishingly, the glass only has a small crack. Come on, let's smash it again. Smash yeah. it again. Sure. Oh, that sounded pretty good. It's a little disappointing that we can't break it that easily, huh? One more to put it out of its misery? Obviously. It's not your four year olds. I think I want to come and work for you. Yeah, no problem. OK, so that glass screen did do pretty well, but most normal glass couldn't have taken that pounding. 